Does your house have high blood pressure? Or better yet, high water pressure? Hey y'all, welcome again to Serving Up Plumbing. I'm David Butler, and today we're talking about a problem that's becoming very common across the nation on people's homes. And that is high water pressure. But before we get into that today, please hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up if you like this video, and let me know what you want in the future. Why do we need a pressure reducing valve? And from here on out, I'm gonna to refer to it as a PRV just to save a little time. First of all, it's required by code. If you have over 80 PSI, 80 pounds per square inch pressure on your water line, the code says, and that's the International Plumbing Code, says that you do need to have a pressure reducing valve on your system. But why does the code say that? Well, as we mentioned before, it's kind of like high blood pressure for your home. As you know, with high blood pressure, it can cause problems with your organs, your heart, your, you could possibly have a stroke, lots of things. Well, that's kind of the same situation with high water pressure on your home. It can damage your shower valves, it can damage your faucets, it can make them start leaking prematurely, it can cause your toilets to run and start leaking, it can cause your water heater to rupture. It can shorten the life of your water heater because it's so much stress on the pipes in your home. And again, anything over 80 is required to have a pressure reducing valve. Many homes have 100, 125. We've even seen as high as 150, which is outrageous. But the city has to do this. And why do they have to do it? We are building so many homes and so many apartments throughout the Metroplex and all of the cities throughout the nation that we can't go in and replace all of our water mains. We can't dig up all of our streets. That would be a nightmare, wouldn't it? So the only way to do that is up the pressure. When we up the pressure, we can push more water through those existing pipes. We often do this in many different ways on plumbing systems. With water, it has to be reduced down to 80 PSI or less. And that way it prevents all of that damage that can occur to your homes. There are many different manufacturers of PRVs. Watts, Kalefi, Cash Acme, and Wilkins, all kinds of companies. And most of them are great valves. Some of them have different bells and whistles like everything else that makes one preferable to another. As you can see in the picture, we have the Kalefi and the Watts and just a few others. They're all similar. The main difference in them, as I said, is how do they operate? Is it easier to operate one than the other? Here at Milestone, we use Kalefi. And the reason being, it's very easy to adjust. Even a homeowner can do it themselves if they wanted to. Some of them, you can't tell what pressure you've adjusted it to without actually having a pressure gauge on your faucet. Others, as you can see with the Kalefi, you can actually dial it into an exact pressure and it's usually very close to that pressure. Along with all the different manufacturers of them, there's also a lot of different ways you can install a PRV. They can be installed inside the house if your water shutoff is in the house. They can be installed in the ground at the front of the house if you have a main shutoff at your house. They can be installed at the meter, which some cities require. And often these places are a requirement by the city. If you can see in the picture here, we're gonna show you a few different installation types. The first one we're gonna be looking at is the one where it's installed in the ground. Now, they're generally at a valve box, either at the house or at the street, as we mentioned earlier. They also have a shutoff valve on them. You have the pressure reducing valve and a shutoff valve so that you can shut off the water to the entire home. The one thing you wanna make sure is when they are buried in the ground that they always have clearance around them. They don't need to be setting in the dirt. They should have gravel underneath them and they should have a clearance of about three to six inches under them between the gravel and the valve. Then we put them in a plastic valve box, a nice lid that goes on top of them. That needs to be set so that it's above the level of the dirt so no dirt will silt in around it and cause it to fill up. The second one we're gonna look at here is one that's in the garage. Now, most of the older homes that we have would all be installed outside. But many of the newer homes from about 2015 and later, often you'll have a shutoff valve for your entire water system inside your garage. And this is very convenient. I wish they'd have been doing it for years. So if it's in the garage, this makes it very easy to install your pressure reducing valve. In fact, it's very likely you already have a pressure reducing valve in your garage right there where your main shutoff valve is. Many of the homes have to have them when they install them nowadays. Some of the cities are requiring that all homes have them nowadays because some of the cities also have things in their water meters and other places that they install check valves and that sort of thing to help protect the municipal water system. One last thing, anytime we do install a pressure reducing valve 
From plumber lingo, we call that a closed system. That means water can go in, but it can't come back out. Well, what that also affects is what we have at our water heaters called thermal expansion. When you heat water up, it expands. In fact, the hotter you get it, the greater it can expand. It can increase your pressure 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds, sometimes even more. And to protect against that, anytime we install a PRV, we have to install an expansion tank at your water heater. What this does is this protects it from causing any damage to the system from the expansion of the hot water. It can absorb the expansion of the water into the expansion tank, but that is required by code to put on anytime we install a PRV. One more thing about expansion tanks. They're charged with air pressure. They come with about 40 to 45 PSI on them, but that's not enough. It has to match the incoming water pressure. Now, the licensed professional plumbers out there should know about how to do this, but if they just install it and don't adjust this, then it's not gonna operate properly. We have to check your water pressure, and if it's at 80 PSI, then we have to air up the expansion tank to match that 80 PSI. If we install the PRV and drop it down to 75, we match the pressure to 75 PSI on the expansion tank. That way it can do the proper expansion control that it needs to for the thermal expansion. All right, we've talked about pressure relief valves today. The high blood pressure for your home. We know that it can damage your pipes, it can damage your water heater, it can damage your valves. If you've got high water pressure, something needs to be done about it. And if you install a PRV, we know there's lots of different brands, lots of different types out there. There's a lot of good ones. It's just kind of a preference of how easy they are to operate. And lastly, you have to protect against that thermal expansion once you close that system with a PRV. If you have a PRV in, make sure that you have an expansion tank. If your plumber puts one in, double check him. Make sure he's putting that expansion tank in. I hope you like this today. Please hit that subscribe button. Let me know if you want to see something in the future and like this video. Thanks again for watching Serving Up Plumbing and just tell your friends the butler did it.